I'm going to create a brand new class called file demo. If you happen to have your exception project open, please do a similar thing and create a file demo class. One of the places where we use exception handling a lot is when we're reading and writing to files. There's a lot that can go wrong when you read or write to a file. The human user might have forgotten to create the file, might have misspelled the file name. Maybe they put the file in the wrong directory. Or maybe while the program was running, they went and deleted the file right in the middle of the run. Users do a lot of weird stuff like that, and you have to be able to write your code to be able to handle it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to read a file, and then we'll decide what to do if the file is not there. If you're working on a Mac, the stuff I'm going to show you is going to be similar. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a text file and we're going to read it. Now, if you're working on BlueJay, you want to put the text file in the same directory where your code is. So to figure out where that is, I'm going to just do a project uh, open and see where the directory is that I have these projects. Looks like it's right on the desktop. So uh, inside my project right here, which is called Bad Data Projects, I need to find that directory on my desktop here. Let's see here. I guess I didn't do such a good job here. All right, let me try it like this. I'll open up a Windows Explorer and go to the desktop. And there should be here. Okay, here's the bad data. Okay, here it is. So this is the directory that corresponds to this directory here. So if I'm going to read a file from here, I'm going to put the file in the same directory. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit right mouse click. I'm going to say new file. And I'm going to say new text document. And I'm going to call this my input.txt. Now, if your .txt is not showing, uh, that's because uh, you probably need to turn on the, um, the, uh, the file extensions tab here to show the txt. So <clears throat> you can see mine's already turned on. So that's why I can see all the suffixes for the files. And now I've created this file called input.txt. I'm going to go into that file, and it'll bring up my default editor, which for me I think is Notepad. And I'm just going to put in here first line, second line, third line. And my goal, and I'm going to save this file, and I'm going to exit. Now, raise your hand if you're using IntelliJ already. OK, if you're using IntelliJ, I'm going to show you where to put the file. So if you look at IntelliJ, just give me a minute because my computer is very slow and has trouble with IntelliJ. If you're looking at an IntelliJ project, you'll notice that you have a source directory where your code is located. That is not where to put the file. Why? Because it's not source. So what you want to do is you want to put the file all the way up here in the project directory. So to do that, you're going to go File, New, and you're going to go file. And you're going to call it input.txt, like that. And you can see it, it's going to put it in right over here. It doesn't look like it, but it's actually under this main directory here. It looks like it's in the source, but it's not. You can see it's not indented over like demo is. And you're going to put in the same thing. You're going to say first line, second line third line, and you're just going to do a save all here. That's if you're using IntelliJ. So if you're using IntelliJ, you put it in the project directory. And if you're using BlueJ, you're going to put it in the same directory where all your code is stored. We now have our file called input.txt. We're going to read that file from our code, and we're going to print what's in it. So let's do that. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to clean out this boilerplate. And I'm going to create a main method. And I'm going to read that file. To read the file, I have to create a file object. So I'm going to say file f equals new file. And I'm going to say input.txt. I have to tell it the name of the file. 
Now, when I compile this, it may want to know where the file class is, and I'm going to just take it from Java IO file. That's the library where the file class exists. And now I'm going to use a scanner again. I'm going to say scanner scan equals new scanner. But this time, instead of putting system.in in here, Mr. Carroll, uh, does someone need help? OK, Mr. Carroll, can you go help Ms. Uh, Banerjee there? Instead of attaching it to the keyboard, I want to attach it to the file now. So I just go like this now. So I'm not reading from the keyboard anymore. I'm reading from the file. And the scanner also needs to be imported. And notice that you see, as soon as you do this, the, the program starts complaining that there might be an exception associated with reading this file and you haven't handled it. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to handle that exception. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to surround this with a try catch block. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I got to import that exception also. So I'm starting to build out my try catch to make sure I can take some action if the file is not found. What would you recommend that we do if the file is not found? What should we do? Does anybody, yes, sir, what do you think? Let them know that file was not found. So we're going to put out a little message here. So you can see that if the file is not found, I tell the user that the file was not found, and then I exit the program. Okay, that's what I've just decided we're going to do if the file is not found. So now what we're going to do is uh, let me let me write, rewrite this slightly here, and I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Because I've introduced this try catch block, I've had to move the scanner inside these curly brackets. If I declare the scanner in here, where will the scanner die? Mr. Borden, where will the scanner die if I declare it in here? At, at the bottom of one of these curly brackets, it will die. I don't want it to die. I need that scanner later. So I'm going to declare it outside the try catch block. I'll initialize it in here, but I'll declare it outside here so that the scanner will now live past the try catch block. And now what I'll do is I'll say while scan dot has next line. <clears throat> String line equals scan dot. Uh, I'm doing this from memory. I'm going to read each line and I'm going to print the line. OK, so I've set up the scanner with this file. I've handled the case where the file might not exist. If I get down here, what does it mean? It means it found the file and everything's OK. And I'm going to read each line and I'm going to print it to the console. So let's run this now. And you can see it successfully 
was able to read those file th that file each line and print it out. Let's look at what happens if the file's not found. I'll just change this to say now this is there is no such file like this, right? So now it's not going to find the file, but you'll notice that instead of getting all that red ink on my screen, I'll get a much better descriptive error message and it'll gently shut down. You can see that it gave me this nice error message telling me exactly what was missing and it shut down the program without showing any red ink. You see that, right? So this is a much better way to handle missing files than just letting the operating system puff up blood all over this screen. So I'll leave this up here for you to copy. You're going to need this for your first lab. And with that, I'm going to hand it over. There's about 15 minutes left. Uh, I'll let you decide if you want to start your first lab or not. This is your first lab right here. It's called Missing File. That's your first lab. And you can work on that today. If you don't feel like working anymore, you can wait till next class. Next class, we're going to do a little bit more work on exception handling. And most of the class is going to be for you to work on these different projects. So we're about two thirds of the way done with our exception handling lectures. So in the time remaining, you have a choice. You can goof off or you can work on this missing file lab. Does anybody have any questions about the material that we learned today? So just to recap, we learned how to do a try catch block. We also learned how to throw our own exceptions if we got in a condition that we were unhappy with. And we also learned how to deal with missing files and to, to catch exceptions related to them. The next time we get together, we'll talk a little bit about how we can have multiple catches that go with a single try and why you would ever want that. We'll also learn one last thing, which is this demo four, which we did not go over today which is how if you have an error over here in this method, we can handle the error in the calling method instead. Those are the things we'll learn next class. That's it for today.